So we are heading back home. We have successfully accomplished our mission to collect some ores. In this case it was just silver, but quite a good amount. Yet not everything came according to plans. So let me show you what happened right before this very moment. So here we are in the base and I have this little rover parked for way too long, so I want to go out. So let's get ready. Let's get inside the rover. I will show you a couple of things and then we will leave the base. Opening the entrance. Getting inside. It's not super practical, but it works. So here we are. Alright, here you can see I already have a few components. I'm using Easy's Inventory Manager to fill up that container with uh, a predetermined set of components that I might need on my trips. The DAS script also is ready. It helps a lot for stability of the rover as well as uh, navigation. Let's unlock from the base and head towards the loading platform. All right, let's activate the loading platform and get back to the rover. So here is where I first uh, encountered my first issue. Let's get into the rover and let me show you what the problem is. So this corridor is four large grid blocks high. Uh, it should be enough for this rover, but you see, I get stuck. The problem is that the loading platform is one block higher, making this part of the entrance or exit not high enough. See again from another angle. Boom, damage. So, well, in the end, to fix it, I used a half uh, block and a 2x1 slope. Yeah, I thought, now everything is fine. Let's get out of this place. But, I was wrong. Let me show you. This is the other um, gate or door. Let me open it. Let me go inside the cabin. Yeah. Taking my time. Okay, so let's try to get out of this place. And I get stuck again. So here I'm back to the loading platform because I skipped the part where I fixed the entrance but as you can see now everything is fine we are ready we are ready for a new adventure let's go yay what am I waiting for you might wonder when I was just um, contemplating the beauty of, of the moment. Yeah, let, let's go. So, I have previously collected a lot of um, GPS locations of any ore I might need. And the, the funny thing is that I did because I thought that I could find Platinum on Triton, but I was wrong, because Platinum is only in space. Oh, another interesting, maybe, hopefully note, is that since the two updates ago, I think, we already have color GPS. So I did it before, so I have colored in green the minerals. We are heading to the closest um, location that have silver 
because this is one of the materials I will need for my large grid ship that is the fire prime um, so here I have activated the um, cruise control that keeps the speed constant and we are heading to the closest silver mine let's get there okay don't do this at home don't leave your vehicle driving by itself unless you have a Tesla luckily I know Triton very well there isn't much of an obstacle around so I have time to refill my hydrogen bottles before getting to the site by the way I don't know what you think but this small grid small hydrogen tank having the small uh, conveyor port to me doesn't look very logical because I cannot use the conveyor system to move the bottles from one place to another and that's why they are placed inside the cabin all right a bit more of patience it's a 10 kilometer strip and I usually don't run at maximum speed because I had bad experiences with the wheels exploding and uh, I don't want to repeat this problem even if I have the components to fix the eventual wheel explosion. I've heard of people that do not play on Triton because the environment is quite boring. Actually I like snow, I like this kind of environment and that's why I have started on this planet that is actually a moon but here is a planet and here we are finally getting close to the mining area we are going towards this silver uh, vein and we will deploy the mining drone this mining drone is equipped with a couple of script uh, there is the spugs out of dock plus the gravity align script Autodock is obviously for a commodity because this way I don't have to pilot the drone every time towards the connector. Plus it have a timer block that is triggered automatically to turn the battery to recharge and turn off the lights. On the other side the gravity align script is to avoid uh, flipping the drone and uh, this way having it stuck on the ground. It happened to me already, that's why I'm using this script. The arms of this drone are uh, equipped with um, hinges, so I can turn them 90 degrees. I make sure I'm right on top of the ore I try to mine, extra the ore in the central part, and then I start carving all around. I really enjoy using this drone because even if it's very compact it has a lot of features it used two scripts it have um, two cameras and as you will see in a moment how I'll put a third one it works better than any mining ship I've ever built and I like to pilot it from the comfort of the cockpit of the rover so I love it yet this mining drone doesn't have any container it just used the connector and um, um, mining arms themselves to store the minerals yet it's enough for the capacity the thrusters have talking about the rover instead we have a lot of features the roof as you have noticed is equipped with the solar panel plus there are two hydrogen generators that as you have heard in the last update got an improvement meaning that given the same amount of ice we have more energy produced including um, in the rover there is also an O2H2 generator so I can just extract some ice from this planet that is filled with it and produce all the hydrogen I want that is gonna be stored on two small hydrogen tanks that will also help to maintain the power on the whole rover here i am placing a third cam because i want to see where i'm going when i'm returning to the surface 
Yeah, I have a survival kit with me, so I just need a few stones to produce the necessary minerals and then the necessary components. So you might imagine that with this rover you can actually survive a very long time and even start building another base. So it's actually a very good survival vehicle. Maybe I can call it a day and make it ready for the workshop now. Yeah, because time ago I made a trailer. Uh, supposedly I was about to release that to the workshop and I never did that. Uh, the thing I hate the most is to configure the actions and making a uh, good looking series of pictures and all the like. It's annoying, but that's what it takes to have a professional entry on the workshop. And look at that. Isn't that super cool? see a drone just coming back by itself to its position to its own landing pad i like script in this game there are so many and so on. some of them are super useful here i'm checking how much i have already extracted of um silver it's quite enough but i haven't filled the whole set of containers i have in the central LCD I ha actually have a um, fancy LCD display that indicates that but I forgot it so I'm checking all around except where I should. Also as I see it on the, the control seat I realized that these displays in the center part are too far so much better. I can read between the lines so to speak. Yeah so let's continue let's move the uh, rover a little closer to the extracting site and let's do the last few runs in order to fill up the whole cargo space and whoa is deeper than i could even remember all right so the cargo is almost completely full just a few bunch of uh, ores eventually but no let's go back home and uh have you noticed how cool is this nice guy on triton you should visit sometime oh and yeah before i leave i want to do something just um for our safety because as you I've noticed before I sometimes let the rover drive by itself. So a spot like this one it's quite dangerous. Let's fill it with blocks to avoid accident in the future. There. Perfect. Smooth and dandy. Let's go back home, fellow engineers. What do you think? And I don't know if you've experienced that, but sometime while driving in the night in um, a beautiful environment like it can be Triton, I started thinking about the future. Yeah, maybe you have heard about Elite Dangerous. I did. Uh, yeah, it was for free and I started roaming around the galaxy with my Viper MK4. Anyways, you might hear more about that game in the future from me. Home sweet home, we finally made it back. And the entrance is finally not trying to destroy our drone, that's pretty cool. Mission accomplished. Okay, yeah, I was driving too fast, I guess. The 2 by one slope is not enough for this rover. 
Oh yeah, and uh, one of the viewers had been noticed, and I noticed also by myself when trying to use this arm, that um, when I added the second piston to make this arm larger, I actually interrupted the conveyor line. So I easily fixed it with um, with a few conveyor tubes. I am not showing it right now, but believe me, it was an easy fix. So this wraps this episode. As you can see, my engineer is staring at the display, showing how much I have gathered. It's a little bit more than 150,000 kilos of um, ore that it's being refined in this very moment. So that's it for this episode, and see you next time. Bye bye. Why this door isn't happening? Hey, let me out! Let me out! Open this door! Come on! Come on, a duck! It's fun when it doesn't last too much. Come on! Hey!